Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Coming to you live from Corner of the Galaxy Studios on Thursday, October 18th. Just before the LA Galaxy get ready to take on Minnesota United on Sunday, Sunday, October 21st, it is a 2 p.m. Pacific time kickoff. This game can be found on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. We're going to talk about how that all came about moving over to ESPN. We are also currently, as we're sitting right here in the studio, watching the ugly results so far out of Real Salt Lake. RSL at halftime leading 3-0. Uh, if any of that changes for any significant direction, we'll, of course, let you know. But that's not the way the Galaxy wanted the results to go. But we're going to certainly talk about all of the possible outcomes of what happens with a win there and everything else that is sort of going on. So a lot of stuff to get to, a lot of things to talk about. But before we get anywhere, I have to welcome my co-host to the show. He is a man, a myth, a legend. He's the Portuguese hammer. Welcome, Mr. Eric Vieira. Eric, how's it going, buddy? It's going very well. I, I couldn't help but notice a, a smell in here when I came in here. It smells, there's a faint smell of the playoffs. The play, no, like, almost. I think, I, I, no. It's, it's just like a little, maybe it's, you know, the other building over. I think a slight sniff of it. I think it's possibly that it's the pumpkin spice. Oh, that that's sort of, also, yeah, yeah, maybe the pumpkin that's what it is. It's, it is I get those crossed all the time. I, the MLS player, playoffs, pumpkin spice. spice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, common common misconception. It's the same thing when you think about it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, so uh, the LA Galaxy's playoff helps get a little slimmer with a, an, an RSL win over New England. There's less room for air, but that's not... It's not over yet. There's still a half for pump, New England to completely change everything that they did wrong in the first half. First half of the season, <laughs> first half of the year, you know, really everything. I, I think I, Brad Friedel's going to turn it around <laughs> in these next 45 minutes. Brad, Brad Friedel coach of New England Revolution came off the field and said, and I quote, uh, they didn't outplay us, they outworked us. Yeah. And when it's 3 nothing, you got outplayed and outworked, yeah. Brad I, I was I was counting my fingers and my toes. I couldn't do the math on that one. <laughs> even You're down 3-0. I, I was going to say, I'd like to point out how bad New England has been. Uh, they even had a penalty kick that, yeah. that was denied. So the, it could have been 3-1. I mean, they really. could have given us a sliver of hope. It should have been. But you know what? Good. We don't have to worry about it. That's out of the way. We've discussed New England, there RSL, and now we can do our show. I'm sure I'm sure the chat room will let us know Absolutely. If, if anything crazy happens. The like chat room does do some great work. So, yes, they'll keep us posted for sure. Like New England scoring from out, outside their <laughs> – or from inside their own half, which does count as three points, yeah, as, as you're well Yeah, we're doing rock and jock rules. That's here. right. That's how – that would be awesome. That's what needs to happen. Three-point rule. Let's implement it right now. <laughs> Zlatan gets three points against. Uh, yeah. No, I guess it was in his own half. So do, that's not still three pointer. It still should be worth. Arc? Definitely should be worth more than one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I always love this stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah, the LA Galaxy getting prepared for a Friday trip. Uh, they will leave on Friday to head to Minnesota. They will train in Minnesota on Saturday, and then they will pl- train or they will play on Sunday. Uh, the big deal here is uh, in terms of how you are watching and how it could possibly go is that uh, instead of it being on Spectrum Sportsnet, as it was originally slated to be, uh, it is now part of the ESPN Flex scheduling pickup, which is good by the league to be able to find that. And that means Galaxy fans, of course, are rescued from having to watch it on Spectrum Sportsnet uh, because, heaven forbid, there might be a Laker-like practice that they say, had to cover. You mentioned they're rescued from watching it. You mean rescued from not being able to watch it, I think, is more like it. Yeah, I think that when it's on Spectrum Sportsnet, they're least least likely less likely to watch it than they do if it's on ESPN. So it's a win win. Yeah, it is. It is. And and but by the way, people in the chat room are already picking up that you have the uh, wearing the New England Revolution. Well, almost technically it's, it's the U.S. Yeah, soccer. It wasn't but, an accident. But it, it was looks, definitely chose on. Uh, I chose this on purpose because because New I, England Revolution's logo still looks like it was from 1994. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. It was, it's an homage, yeah. a clear homage. So shout out to the chat room for catching that. There we go. That's how that's how it works. Uh, yeah. So anyway, like we said, we'll keep you updated. But it is good that this te- this game. Uh, now expected to have more than 50,000 people at it in Minnesota playing on the worst turf in all of Major League Soccer. Uh, they, they're they're trying to break a, a single game record. Uh, this is the last game that will be played at this particular stadium at TCF Bank Stadium until they move to their new stadium. The new I think digs, yeah. uh, the Allianz. Allianz yeah, Field. Al- yeah, not which, Allianz Arena. Which, which looks really nice. It, yeah, from what I hear, and I understand it's not going to be turf. They're going to have some heated... 
some heat heat going on on the bottom to protect from that cold weather. So it seems like it is going to be a, a really nice stadium that they build there, and we won't have to be in uh, you know the Gopher Hole as they call it. Isn't that Minnesota the University of Minnesota? Aren't they the gophers? the gophers? They yeah. are the gophers. Yeah, the gopher hole would be, a, I think that's a totally different bar. Okay, I was going to say. Was, <laughs> I, 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 Moving I, on. I don't think I've been to that bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, so ESPN picks this up, so that means that you're getting a nationally televised game. That means you'll be able to watch it on ESPN and ESPN Deportes. That does not mean that it will be available on ESPN+, Plus. just to be very clear about all that. It's a yes. nationally televised game, uh, but it does mean that your local bar would be able to get it for rather easily if they're not busy showing everything else other than <laughs> Major League Soccer. Yeah, which Sunday, happens. what's going on Sunday? Day, right it's, there's no football there's no baseball yeah. yeah oh wait no everything is back oh yeah that's right hockey it's, it's all it's all <laughs> this is where people claim it's their favorite time of the yeah. year right because everything sports in... equinox is what i saw it referred to as mls is playing i'm sure that's what they lead off that's with usually, MLS is yeah, playing. that's usually what they lead off with. yeah i'm sure that's is uh anyway so uh it's a unique schedule on sunday as well and i need to make that very clear because it does pull into some effect the fact that other teams within the conference will not know the results of other games going into this. Uh, the Eastern Conference, all games in the Eastern Conference all play and kick off at 12 p.m. Everybody in the Eastern Conference except for New England. New England is the odd man out this weekend. Everybody in the Eastern Conference will be playing at 12 p.m. Pacific time, so you can watch all those games all at once except that ESPN Plus doesn't have a multi-screen option, I've heard, uh, so you can't watch more than one at a time. <sighs> Let's so. invest in that. Yeah. And, and to be honest, after today's performance, New England doesn't deserve to play on Sunday. They should. So, they yeah. should, they should why, be, don't you, why don't you take the weekend off? They should be barred from playing for the rest of the year. They should have to forfeit their last games. Uh, so, yeah, so the Eastern Conference all kick off at 12 p.m. Two hours later, the Western Conference games kick off at 2 p.m. Yeah, yeah that's okay, two hours good. later. Good just, math on I'm that. I'm going to say, there's a lot of math up. on this show. A lot of points, a lot of goal differential. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get it all. <laughs> we'll get it all. Uh, so, New England's not playing um, this weekend. Now, that is interesting because RSL, who plays Thursday night, and by the way, was missing a whole bunch of players who were off with international break uh, and had Kyle Beckerman and had uh, Sonny out as well. Um, so all these guys were, were not available. Now now it looks like they just got, like they just really, it looks like they just got a rest. Yeah. And now they can rest they up for Portland. Every, they have everything to play for. So RSL and Portland, RSL season ends on Sunday. Um, so they end a full a uh, week before everybody else. And again, it has to do with the fact that there are 23 teams in the league and you can't play all 23 teams at yeah, once. There's everybody always, has a yeah, like you said, there's always going to be an odd man out. I really, uh, you know, I think this is kind of, they're going to do two decision days. I really liked, you know, when MLS did that, they made a decision day. Everyone plays at the same time and all the points shake out at the very end. So I think because of the odd teams, they're basically doing it two weekends in a row. Uh, the first weekend to finish it for, you know, RSL, and the next weekend to finish it for everyone else and New England. So that RSL game, as we've told, and we remember that we started this talking about uh, Portland versus RSL, or Portland at RSL, and Portland went there and smacked RSL in the face, and that is one of the things that you looked at and said, okay, now the LA Galaxy have a significant chance of getting into the playoffs. Uh, with RSL's win over New England, which, by the way, on my likely scenarios in Western Conference, I had them beating New England. So this does not screw yeah. up Josh's likely scenarios, uh, but it does come down to Sunday. Uh, Sunday is the, gay, is the day where you'll be able to see whether or not RSL will be able to advance. Um, and if they win, they are going to the playoffs. Uh, it's that simple. So you have RSL, who looks like they're going to win this game against New England, getting three points. They're now four points separated from the LA Galaxy. If the Galaxy do anything but win on Sunday... Uh, it gets very difficult yes. to see any other result for the Galaxy in terms of that would be it. And and going back to what you said, I think anyone looking at this schedule, watching in New England with the form that they've had this season, going away to Real Salt Lake, I don't think you really expected them to make some noise. I mean, you kind of hoped for a draw. You hoped for something to happen. And then you saw the players that they had out. Um, you thought maybe maybe there's going to be a chance, uh, but really, realistically, it's going to come down to that Portland game. And so watching Portland uh, go to RSL and, and beat up on them, that's a good sign. And then the fact that Portland still has something to play for here. Portland uh, is, I mean, they're 99% uh, you know, clinched, but they still need some points here. So even a draw. They need at least a draw, so I think they're going to be playing for something. They're not going to be looking to wrap it up. Yeah, Portland does not get a chance to relax. Yeah. They don't have any sort of standing that allows them to relax. Uh, in fact, they could miss the playoffs. We yeah. have a scenario. Yes, a lot makes, of math. Th yeah, there's a lot of math, and and so do you want to go to that? That yeah, now? Let's, let's do go it. For okay, it. let's go for it now. All right, so let's talk about point totals as they stand 
right now, RSL has 46, plus, so they're one point above the LA Galaxy, who has 45. Uh, Portland has 51 points, all right? Now, you sit there and say, Josh, Portland seems like they're out of touch with the LA Galaxy. Well, with RSL's win tonight, that puts them at 49. They're still four points ahead, or excuse me. Yeah, four, 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 point, yeah. four points ahead at 49. Four, thank you. You need to check this for me. Yes. We went over this that's beforehand, why I'm here. and we kept This is going, why you need yeah. a second person. Exactly. Fact, you know, for, for this back, reason. I'll be your hype man. Yeah, that's right. 49 that's right. points. 49 points. <laughs> uh, the LA Galaxy would be four points behind. Uh, so then if you add on uh, three points against Minnesota, which the Galaxy have to win, uh, you would put that into 48 points for the LA Galaxy uh, against the 49 points of Real. Salt Lake. So still sitting on the outside. So still sitting on the outside. Then if Portland were to lose against Real Salt Lake, Real Salt Lake would go and get 52 points. That's correct. Their 52 points would put them above Portland at 51 points. And if the LA Galaxy then won their final season game or or their season finale game against Houston, that would give them 51 51 points. If Portland then lost to Vancouver, they're at Vancouver the last game of the season. If Portland would somehow lose to Vancouver in there, you would have a tie, uh, t- a tie on points between the LA Galaxy and the Portland Timbers. Uh, that's 51 points to 51 points. Then you would go to wins, and you would look at the wins and find that Portland would have 14 wins. And if the Galaxy went out, they'd the, have 14 they'd wins. They'd have 14 wins. That's the first tiebreaker is wins. The second tiebreaker is goal differential. I get to do math for you now. Yeah, this is the fun part. This is the fun part because people go, oh, then you'd have to make up the goal differential. Okay, if you lose a game... By definition, you lose it as a minus one goal differential. Uh, it doesn't matter if you... Technically, if you're losing points, points you need to lose by at least a goal. At least a goal. <laughs> so it's a minus one. Um, so then uh, if you win a game, you have to get it. You get it. You at have to win. One. It's at least plus one. So if you do the plus one, plus one, and the minus one, minus one, the LA Galaxy would go to the playoffs over the Portland Timbers on goal differential. With a three, plus three goal differential to, to Portland's plus, plus two. two. Yes. Brutal. And, and it could even be more than that. They could be separated <laughs> yes. by more depending on how much you lose by and all these other but things. But at a minimum. But yes, so Portland is not locked in. So somebody had suggested on Twitter that Portland doesn't have anything to play with, play for and they're locked in. That's not true at all. They, got, yeah. they have to do something. And the fact is Portland won't know what they have to do because Seattle is part of that yeah. and, and some other, other people are part of that. And they all play at the same time. That's one of the reasons that we kick off all of these games right now um, at the at the same time. So 12 p.m. for Eastern Conference, 2 p.m. for Western Conference, and then I believe the last day of the year, everybody kicks off at the exact yes. same time across the league, That's the regardless of, of conference. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> there's lots of things here. But I'll also tell you, if RSL drops any points whatsoever and the LA Galaxy went out, the LA Galaxy would go to the playoffs. Yes. Uh, a draw against Portland the last, the last game uh, of the season for them on Sunday would open the door for the Galaxy. And not only that, but if the Galaxy win, because they need to win, yeah. uh, if they win against Minnesota, then they would go into Houston knowing that if they beat Houston, that They're they in. would be in. Uh, depending on, is it is it dependent? Could they do it with one with one, no, they have to. We've already decided they yeah. have to win out. They have to win out I with think RSL this, winning. Galaxy have yeah, to win out. Yeah, this RSL uh, win definitely puts Sunday's game even even more important. They need, they really need three points there. Yeah, which is an interesting thing to sort of talk about. Now we we talked and theorized about uh, <laughs> the LA Galaxy's uh, main scoring weapon, Mr. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Is he the leading scorer? He is twenty one goals. Oh, okay. So yeah. Actually, he's also a leader in assists with nine assists with games. Yeah. as well. I guess he's pretty good. Uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and whether or not he would travel to Minnesota. Uh, he was talking to the press today, said that uh, he would travel and be available to Minnesota. Uh, as a matter of fact, you have the quote. I do have the quote. I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I was going to say I'll last up. time I was here, we talked about the super villain that is Laton, and he gave us another super villain. This, is, this quote. is so good. Again, remember, you have to remember there's 50,000 plus people going to, uh, going to TCF bank stadium, uh, to watch this final game at that stadium for Minnesota. Uh, and so Zlatan says, and I quote, I owe them to come. Obviously they don't have this crowd every home game, so I'm sure they're not coming from Minnesota. So I come <laughs> and I make them enjoy. So there you go. So yeah. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, not only that, but we talked on Monday with Kevin Baxter about po- the possibility of the results on Thursday. Thursday night dictating whether or not Zlatan Ibrahimovic would travel and whether or not he would start. Uh, with RSL soundly, it looks like beating the New England Revolution. Watch, New England's going to score four the, goals, you know, and the whole first part of this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> I don't think anybody would care. That's peak right? MLS right there. I was going to say, that's exactly how it goes. Um, 
I don't think uh, – it's it's one of those things that looking at that, that now you sit there and say, okay, well, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, the Galaxy's leading goal scorer, the guy who really the offense revolves around, the guy who has really pulled the LA Galaxy out of any sort of tailspin that they had been in, and it's certainly been a part of uh, you know an amazing season, a short season, by the way, for him in, st- in terms of games played, but uh, one of the all-time greatest seasons in terms of LA Galaxy goal scoring. Uh, in fact, currently tied second with uh, Hurtado in goals scored in the season. Um, so you look at all that, and, and you say that Zlatan Ibrahimovic, it would be, if you're a betting person, you're sitting there and saying he's starting now. Yes, and I, I think the you look at the way the Galaxy have played in their most recent games, they've got after teams early. So they've shown that, they've shown that they're capable of scoring early. So I think you, you start Zlatan, and you um, and you try to get the early goal, and then if you need to, you take him off later. But you you go for the victory soon. And, and a lot of this... When you think about it, you t- they talk about Zlatan playing on turf, and you say, "Well, he, you know, he's going to get hurt." He's he's not a Fabergé egg. I mean, he he's a big man. He 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 knows how to run. And, you know, it's it's not that crazy to play on turf. It's not like you know we're we're out there and we're slamming his body on the ground. I mean, he's going to take care of himself. He's going to be careful when he's out there. I mean, obviously, yes, there's a higher probability of him getting injured. But I mean, let's not let's not treat him like he's uh, you know a, a toddler out there. He, he he's going to be careful with what he's doing. Bulletproof Baggio who. <laughs> Sidic broke his leg on this turf the last time these two teams played there. Uh, and and by the way, it's now 4-0. Um, oh, of course. There we go. 4, four nothing. Right. So we don't need to check yeah. that score anymore. No, no, we're good. So uh, RSL over New England, apparently, 4 nothing. I think a chat room, you just verify that that's what you were trying to tell me with the 4 nothing. But I imagine it was. Uh, I think so, they were rating the show out of 10. Out of 10. 4. <laughs> four. <laughs> well, they're rating, they're rating each of us out okay, of 10. I'm go. a 4 and you're a 0. zero. Okay. okay. I so, thought we could uh, split the difference, that 2 was, and 2. That was, but thanks, Josh. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no now problem. I'm not coming back. I need all of it. <laughs> I need all of it. To feed this ego. I was wondering why my lighting was off. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so it is interesting to see whether or not you know Zlatan will play, which I think he will now. Uh, it's interesting to see whether or not uh, he will start, which I think he will now. Um, and the other part of this is that Zlatan Ibrahimovic is, of course, on yellow card caution. Oh. Uh, so if <laughs> the he plot gets, thickens, up oh, they're they're calling. Wait, they called back the goal. It's oh, still three nothing. VAR. Again, All right, peak MLS. P- there you go. That's that's how we do VAR check. It's called back. There we go. Okay, so three nothing. There's still a chance for New England. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. So anyway, uh, but no, so Zlatan Ibrahimovic on yellow card warning. You know what an issue? If he gets a yellow card in this game, he misses the game against Houston. If he makes it to Houston, it doesn't matter anymore, (laughs) okay? Because it doesn't carry over to the playoffs. Uh, So there we go. Okay. That's good to know. It's all sort of there. So that's where we are uh, sitting with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He will travel. I think there's a likelihood that he starts. In fact, I would put it above 70 or 80% that he starts now. Uh, I think everybody was hoping that that's not the way it would have to be. I think that possibly... Uh, they were hoping that for Zlatan Ibrahimovic, they could leave him on the bench and then see if they needed him because really a draw at one point, if RSL had dropped some points here, it would, wouldn't, wouldn't kill them. Wouldn't so. have killed them. In mm-hmm. fact, it would have still put them in a pretty good spot. And you have to look at it like, <laughs> here we go. Must win game. Uh, you know, because of this, if they, if they drop points against Minnesota, then their season could be done. Yeah. So you, you need to put it all on the line. Yeah. Is there, I, there's no scenario that I can see that keeps the Galaxy in if they drop any points to Minnesota now. Not with the RSL win. I don't think it, because you, Portland, no, because you need Portland all Portland would the, have to win. Well, let's see. Yeah. So, okay, let's let's work this out. Uh, so it's four our, points. We already went over this. You had to have four you, points. If they, then the Galaxy would have to have four points, but they wouldn't be able to catch them on wins. Yes, that's RSL what, would have wins. That's what it is. So they can't drop a point. Yeah, yeah. So wait, the video review. Some somebody's they're coming back. Possibly it's did four they nothing review again. the review? Did they, did oh, they take man. a look at it again? VA ruled it four nothing was not offside. So there you go. Okay, <laughs> good. Put that one. To the, I, this is going to sound really stupid, like on the podcast Absolutely. part of this, and not on the yeah. live show. Again, that's why they ranked us a four out of four out of ten. I'll tell you. We weren't going to do this. This is what we were going to do. Yeah, we, we pre-gamed this. You're the one leading this discussion. Josh. It's exciting. Be a professional. It's exciting. People are talking. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that's where you sit. So yeah, it, it's impossible really for the Galaxy if they drop points um, whenever they go in. It, you can't do it. Um, and you can't do it. And so now if you're the Galaxy, it becomes very simple. Uh, it's a simple game. Uh, they win both games. That's it. They have to get six points. Uh, six points probably gets them in. Probably. Yeah. Probably. It, it should. It should. It, it should, should work. But again, a wise man once told me, do not should all over yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. I mean, yeah, it is. Those are good words. That is. Um, so anyway, so we go the whole we go the whole gamut of things here. And so that's where you sit in the sort of playoff and likely scenario. Now, again, I have I have RSL losing at Portland, um, which puts the Galaxy in a great position. And that happens on Sunday at the same time. So the games will be play, being played simultaneously. You could know on Sunday 
whether or not the LA Galaxy have any chance of making the playoffs. Uh, if they drop any points, they're probably out of them. Uh, yeah. In fact, they are out of the, out of the playoffs. Uh, if they can get a win, then you have to look at other results. And if RSL wins, then you have to look at Portland, and it'll go to the next weekend. And if Portland loses at Vancouver and Houston loses, then the Galaxy will go. Yeah. This this is why it's it's actually kind of exciting. It is, and and that's why they schedule the games this way. And I think um, what you're hoping for is that the Sunday game comes against Houston uh, next Sunday and that they're out of it. You know, you don't want to go there and just have that be a consolation game and just kind of be, you know, an end cap to the season. You want there to at least be a glimmer of hope to make that game worth watching and make it exciting. So uh, I think that's the one scenario that you are rooting for, that even if it's slim, a slim chance, you want to be able to call that as opposed to just it being completely out of reach by Sunday. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, uh, again, all of these are important, and uh, you are all of a sudden, you know, really... You kind of want to be a Portland fan on Sunday. I think that you makes the most be. sense. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you were a Portland have... fan the first time around when <laughs> they went to You so, You were RSL. because it made the most mm-hmm. sense. Um, but really, all I said was whoever won the first game needed to win the second game, and that stands true right now. So you really do want Portland. Although if Portland loses the next two games and you go into that tiebreaker scenario. Then you're a Vancouver fan. Then you're a Vancouver fan. So yes. It, so you it, know it, who wins? Major League Soccer <laughs> wins. We get to support. I've supported four different teams. Supported Sporting Kansas City, Portland, New England, right. and then I could possibly be supporting Vancouver. So there you go. Well, we also have some injury updates in terms of uh, what's going on with the LA Galaxy. Um, and it's not surprising. There's three players who really have been on sort of the injury block now for, for quite some time. Giovanni Dos Santos, uh, Bradford Jameson, and Chris Pontius. And we learned today that Chris Pontius is out the remainder of the season. Uh, Dominic Kinnear confirmed today that it's likely that Chris Pontius will need surgery to repair his groin injury, uh, and he will not play for the rest of the season. So uh, Chris Pontius has five goals, six assists, uh, just under 1,500 minutes played, and was a ridiculously good pickup by the Galaxy this year uh, in terms of a whole bunch of areas, not just his work rate. Uh, he was scoring and assisting uh, for a long stretch, so yeah. he was really important. And quite honestly, the Galaxy miss him right now, not being able to pull off a, a, a midfielder yeah. off for, for an what, offensive sub. What he was, he's, he was really a utility man outside of the defensive line. Um, any you, know, you could plug him in at forward, you can plug him in on the wing, uh, you you didn't really see him in the mi- in the middle, but where you needed those subs, he was able to plug in in all of those positions. So it really is a tough blow because you know when I look at the leading score, he's actually our fourth leading scorer with those five goals that puts him at fourth best on the team. So the fact that he was able to get that done, uh, the Galaxy really relied on him early on in the season, and and he was really crucial to helping that team out. So it is that is a tough blow because he's someone he you would like to have. Uh, in these crucial games to bring in off the bench or to start in a spot if he had some yellow card issues. And then he's obviously going to be a help, would be a help uh, had he been in the playoffs. So this is a tough blow. Yeah, it's a a big deal. Um, Bradford Jamison and Giovanni Dos Santos both seem like they are ruled out for this weekend, um, but that Dominic Kinnear expects that both of them are back to train for the Houston game at the end of the season. Doesn't that throw a wrench in the plans? (laughs) Where are you going to put it? What are you going to do with Giovanni? Well, I was going to say if, if, you know, Dom has showed that he, he was going to sit Shelvick and he's going to sit Siani uh, to keep the team chemistry going. If, if they're riding high on a win and Giovanni Dos, Dos Santos is healthy, does, does Dom start him? Does he put him in the game? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an interesting one. It's yeah. certain, I, I, and that's, uh, yeah. I think the one good thing, I mean, and we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, is that he's coming off an injury, so he's probably unlikely to start. Unlike, correct, yeah. correct. Maybe some sub minutes at the very yes. end. I mean, you're looking at like 10, 15 minutes yeah. tops uh, for somebody. And if you need a goal... If you need a goal, you're going to bring him in. I mean, I would bring him in. If you need a goal, well, who yeah, else are you going to bring you're in? Throwing a, he's an offensive option. Who else are you going to bring in? Or an offensive option, if, yeah, yeah, depends <laughs> depending on, on where, where your stance sending. is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Um, one of the things that we certainly should talk about is that Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, scoring tons of goals, as we, of course, we know, 21 goals for the LA Galaxy. Um, you certainly look at uh, at what he has done on the field for the LA Galaxy, and he is now nominated for league-wide aw- awards. I would like to point out, Specifically, that I do not have a vote in any of the league-wide this boards. Is, this is a sham operation. It's a sham, I, so I don't, I don't feel any pressure on this whatsoever, which is good <laughs> because some of these awards are just ridiculous, and it's really hard for me to even get behind any of them. But it seems like he's nominated for all of them. I mean, Basically. he's not nominated for quite a few. I think. I mean, I mean, wouldn't Zlatan Ibrahimovic love to lift the Landon Donovan Most Valuable that, Player that trophy? That would be something. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, not since Dirk Diggler have we seen someone so poised to take uh, all of the awards on his debut. Oh my, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, <laughs> uh, nominated for MVP, 
uh, nominated for Comeback Player of the Year and for Newcomer of the Year. How do you have... Zlo- humanitarian of the Year, also in the running. Oh, my gosh. Google humanitarian. It. I don't want to. You know how the, <laughs> those humanitarian ones of the year are goofy? Like, they just pick yeah. people. There's not voting that goes on. The Galaxy... Uh, they have, have their they, own. They have their own, and we don't get any vote on it. They just pick somebody, yeah. and that and that's fine. Uh, we went over on Monday's show uh, the team awards, which I do have a vote for. Kevin and I both have votes for uh, in terms of MVP and Defender of the Year. And so Zlatan Ibrahimovic was uh, our our COG unanimous decision. Uh, I, yeah, and, and we were having way, this discussion. I'd be very curious to see if he was number two on anyone's ballot because he should be number one across the board. You know, if they open this to a fan vote, he would win, right? He would of win, of course. Yeah. But you know who would come in second? Giovanni Dos Santos. I'm just pointing that out. All right. Just if you wanted to know how it goes, the fan vote, that's how it will go because it has nothing to do with actual LA Galaxy fans. Uh, It has all to do with whoever has a large Twitter following and and who can get people to click on the link and that type of thing. And so Zlatan would win, but Gio would come in second. Uh, So, anyway, uh, Zlatan for MVP. Listen, uh, Zlatan wins two of these three awards, probably. You You can make an argument for all of them, but. Realistically, yeah, I there, think two of them are in the back. There's one other guy who has a lot of momentum right now, and I don't know if he got nominated or not, but who I would look at newcomer of the year, and it's another person who deserves to Mike be... Mike Ciani? No- yeah, exactly. <laughs> How'd you know? Um, newcomer of the year, uh, Wayne Rooney. Yeah. Wayne Rooney could could be a newcomer of the year, um, yeah. which is hysterical that Zlatan Ibrahimovic <laughs> and Wayne Rooney would be, would be newcomers. Those young fellas. Those, the young guys. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so newcomer of the year. I could see Zlatan Ibrahimovic winning newcomer of the year. I could see him winning comeback player of the year after his injury. Um, so both of those things seem almost – I would say comeback player of the year is locked in. I That, that one to me just – you can't make an argument yeah, for anybody I'm, else I'm, if you're going by the injury standard here. Well, unless you want to count Giassi Zardes. That's who I'm pulling for. I mean, that's a slap in face – slap in the face to the galaxy if Giassi goes and wins comeback player. Yeah, but I mean, you really have yeah. to go by injury and more than anything. Yeah, and, and it's a full was... season. He he started hot, but he's kind of cooled off towards the end of the season. Still, I think he has 16 goals. 16 goals? Yeah. 70? I mean, that's, that's a still, lot. That's still a lot. That's well, a lot. We would take a player with six, a forward with 16 goals right now. But you have a forward with 21 yeah. goals. I don't I don't. <laughs> see, there's no making you happy. Uh, so anyway, but I'll tell you right now, in my mind, you could certainly make the case for Zlatan Ibrahimovic being the most valuable player in the league because to the LA Galaxy, he is the most valuable player they have. And so by the definition, he is the most valuable because the person who's going to win this, Joseph Martinez from uh, from Atlanta United, uh, is a, an important piece in a very good system yeah. that has a lot of without, supporting roles around him. Without Joseph Martinez, Atlanta United is still a solid team. Yeah. I mean, and so that's the argument against him. But but he's performing well. I mean he's he's the the be- oftentimes you see around other leagues the best player on the best team is going to be the person who wins MVP and to give MVP to a team that's going to finish you know twelfth or thirteenth in the supporter shield race it just doesn't seem like that it's great optics for the league so I think Joseph Martinez is going to run away with it. I, I will tell you this, however, uh, whenever and and Ben Bayer who works for MLSsoccer.com pulled out a chart which I always like charts 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 are fun. Uh, pulled out a chart, non-penalty goals plus assists per 90 minutes. Non-penalty goals like plus that. assists per 90 minutes. Who do you think is at the top of that chart? Uh, would you think it is uh, somebody... Mike Ciani. From, yes, again, correct. Uh, would you think it's uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Bradley Wright Phillips, or Sebastian Giovinco, Darwin Quintero, Joseph Martinez. Who is at the top of the list for you? I, I've, I've been watching the Galaxy. It's got to be Zlatan. It is He's got to be at the top. 1.19... Uh, goals per plus assists per 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Wright Phillips is second, 1.07. Okay. Giovinco, 1.02. So Martinez isn't, where is he on this list? Is he, he is, on the list? Yes, he is. Okay. Uh, Darwin Quintero is uh, 0.93. Uh, Joseph Martinez at 0.93 as well. So, oh, so, so he, tied it's with a Quintero. lot of penalties then. Yeah. It, well, I mean, there's, there's some, and he doesn't get a bunch of assists. Of assists. It's, yeah, it really is a true finisher. Yeah. 21 goals plus a nine assists for Zlatan Ibrahimovic really pushes him into this, uh, into this realm of, of these guys. So anyway, it's, it's one of those interesting things that you look at and you say, okay, uh, just to sort of quantify the season that Zlatan Ibrahimovic has had, not that you need to quantify it. Uh, certainly the goals against LAFC probably do enough to explain his season <laughs> More than anything, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, that's where you sit with uh, with Zlatan Ibrahimovic and how good of a season that he has had. Uh, all right. I think, we, I think we can get into some more fun stuff. Um, oh, I was going to check this while, while we do it. Uh, 
One of the things that we want to talk about, obviously, is that uh, the results did go their, the way of the LA Galaxy on Wednesday night. Yes. Uh, Vancouver, who was leading one nothing at halftime and who the Galaxy did not want to win, uh, eventually lost 4-1 to to Sporting Kansas City in Vancouver. Uh, that helps because Vancouver could have made the playoffs if they had yeah. won out. And uh, knocks them out. Yeah, their, their last four games. Uh, their chances now drop to about 3% uh, of making the playoffs, while the Galaxy's chances before the RSL game jumped up to... 36 percent but yes. i'd be interested to see what they are right now now that rsl has been putting up a uh, a, a four nothing a four spot a four spot yeah. on on everybody because rsl's chances are going to improve it's likely they take percentage points away from vancouver and the la galaxy and there's order not to... a lot to take away from vancouver so i think the galaxies are going to be the ones who take the hit there yeah i mean i think you i think you could i, I think you could see it i mean vancouver's chances go to like less than one yes. percent you know that's gonna of thing. it's gonna drastically drop so we'll uh we'll see if I can check that before the end and if they have updated them before the uh, before the end. Sometimes it waits until after the games or until the following day to update it. But right now, the LA Galaxy's chances went from 32% to 36% just on the basis of Vancouver losing that game to Sporting Kansas City. Obviously, uh, the score with RSL and New England going RSL's ways, as we've already told you, but 538 uh, currently has RSL at a 63% chance to make the playoffs. Uh, DC United, by the way, who was like completely out of it at one point, is yeah, a 92% chance to make the playoffs now. Yeah, my brother actually sent me a message. He said, do you want to put money on DC United to win MLS Cup? Because that would be a great payout. And it's not unlikely. I think, I no, think, it's, it's I think not. you look at the way they're playing, you look at how Wayne Rooney is just putting goals away left and right and the t- you know they have talent around them uh, they're playing well so so that's not out of the realm of possibility it's not out of the realm of possibility it's just like the LA Galaxy if the Galaxy yeah. get in they're obviously playing on a on a pretty hot clip right now um, if they get in, they beat Minnesota. If they get in, they beat Houston. They're favorites in both of those games. You put them in there. Uh, who's gonna? Who wants to play them in the playoffs? No one wants to play them. I'll tell you that. And 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 if you're an LA Galaxy fan, you're rooting for DC United as well. Because I saw I saw today someone had posted uh, LA Galaxy had put in, posted an event MLS Cup Finals. And so you know I don't know what scenario if you're going in as a six seed. I think if DC United makes it to a final, that's probably a scenario where the LA Galaxy would host. host. Th- so that happened. Yeah. This happened. This exact. The, the situation. Second Houston. Happened. Yeah, the second time mm-hmm. Houston came in, the Galaxy and Houston both scraped, scraped yeah. into the playoffs. <laughs> and basically the only team that the Galaxy could have hosted that 2012 MLS Cup against was Houston. And Houston ended it up getting all the out. way there. And the Galaxy got to uh, got to host MLS Cup in 2012. And that was the first MLS Cup that was hosted based upon the best record of the team. Because 2011 was preordained as being okay. in Los Angeles. Got and it. so that's 2012. I, rem- I remember all these things. Well done. Yes. I'm, I'm Points. Out. Audi, Audi index points, points for you. Woohoo! Uh, all right, uh, as we continue on and go through a whole bunch of things, I know everybody's clamoring for rumors. Uh, so let's start. Let's talk a little rumors. Um, we talked on Monday about Roman Alessandrini possibly being linked to the Montreal Impact, uh, a Frenchman going to Montreal. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, oui, oui. Also, with a little Italian sort of uh, ancestry with the last name Alessandrini, you you could possibly see that fitting into the yeah. to the, the Montreal. P- you have Piatti, you have Alessandrini. The names for your Italian, the names at the very least are, are Italian. Are to Italian. us stupid yes. American yeah, minds. Exactly. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, obviously, none of those guys are Italian, yes, but still. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, but now a different rumor has popped up. And not only is it a rumor about a player on the field, but it's a rumor about a possible coach. As well, um, the rumor started earlier. I guess today, uh, I'll tell you that uh, just to start, I don't put a whole bunch of faith in this rumor. Um, but people are really taking off like this because it's li- fun. It's fun. I yeah. get it. But there's so- certain things like I see some rumors and everybody just completely ignores them. Like, oh, it's not sexy enough to warrant some yeah. some you know upheaval in Twitter land, right? Exactly. Uh, this one, however, did uh, Dario Benedetto, uh, a target of the LA Galaxy. I think was it two years ago? Two or, years. Yeah. I think it was two years ago. It feels like two years because ago. because it was before. Uh, I believe it was the year they landed Alessandrini. He was another one of those targets, and, and, they, and whenever they picked up Jonathan Dos Santos, yes. and yeah, that type of thing. Um, so uh, Dario Benedetto playing down at Boca Juniors in Argentina uh, is apparently a target for the LA Galaxy once again. Uh, the deal right now that I've been seeing is a twelve million dollar deal, uh, and apparently. Uh, it was uh, it was rejected, and he wanted to stay at Boca at one okay. point. That was that was in the past, and now that deal seems to have resurfaced, and it still seems like it's about the See, same amount of money. Okay, and and you would think you would you know 
probably wouldn't increase because he is someone who's coming off another injury. So seeing the price value increase would be would be odd. Yeah, I mean, even so, even let's say you're you're getting him at a discount rate, it goes from twelve million to like eight million. Yeah, maybe. it's still it's still DP money, and so you'd still have to see. You you mentioned it. Maybe Alessandrini has to has to depart if this is something they're they're getting serious about, but. It's, I don't know. It's not just, it just that simple, though. See, oh, that, that's, that, what, that's, that's what, one piece of that's it. That's one piece of it, because Benedetto plays the number nine role, and I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a tall Swede who plays... Yeah, <laughs> Zlatan Ibrahimovic plays the number nine role. He doesn't fill a role that the Galaxy need right now. Now, regardless of Zlatan Ibrahimovic and what he has said, he is currently under contract for the next year of 2019 now. The Galaxy could let him out of that contract, and quite honestly, if he doesn't want to stay, you let him go, uh, because you, you don't want to force him to stay in, in all those things. Um, and I know people are screaming, no, you hold him to that contract. He's like, no, you <laughs> I just, don't. I just saw a Samsung Galaxy commercial with Zlatan. He's, I, I'm, I'm almost convinced that he came to the Galaxy just for Samsung commercials. Hey, hey it works it, for me. It works out perfectly. They, if that's how we'll, it works. We'll, we'll be the benefactors of for that. For $1.5 million a year. <laughs> we'll let can, Samsung foot the bill. That's right. That, that works <laughs> fine. Um, so they're going after Dario Benedetto. So you would have to get a DP open. Now, I know everybody's screaming, get rid of Geo. Get rid of Geo. Someone has to want him. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and so yeah, maybe it's a possibility. And I've told you that sources have told me that they believe that there is a significant uh, audience around the world and in Mexico to still be able to pull off Giovanni dos Santos. It doesn't mean that he's able to go for six and a half million dollars a year, which is probably what the Galaxy are going to pay him uh, next. But there is a possibility of that happening. So yeah, if you depart Gio, then possibly you could bring Benedetto. But again, without Zlatan leaving, it's kind of a, yeah. a moot point because where do, where you, do you put him? Where are you going to put him? We're just going to do a, a all the forwards just all, the, for, all just, the forwards out there you're talking about i think the second or third best offense in major league soccer is the la galaxy and, and spending more, add more offense yeah and, that's what we'll, and, that's what we need and even <laughs> and, and by the way i'll point out that even if the if it's a transfer fee of 12 million dollars even if it's a transfer fee of eight million dollars it still pushes them into dp contract money because tam cannot take eight million dollars of, of transfer yeah. fee in order to do it even if the guy's making 1.1 well, 1. 1 million dollars and that transfer fee doesn't go to the player so so you're going to need to compensate the player. It gets crazy. Uh, so those are all the things that sort of fall into place. So you, you're not going to get Benedetto on a TAM, play, TAM deal unless, like Zlatan, they pull off some miracle of miracles. I, I don't think Benedetto is going to be doing a lot of Samsung commercials. So, it doesn't seem yeah, like he's going to want that money for on-field performance. Uh, 35 goals, 11 assists, and 49 games for Boca. Um, but it gets it gets even deeper than that. It's not just the player. We said it was also something else. And and you're also looking at the coach. Uh, the coach of Boca is uh, Guillermo Barroscoloto. You'll remember that name as he's a former Columbus Crew great. I was going to uh, say, uh, host... Hoisting an MLS Cup. That's at, at StubHub. At StubHub. I was there. So I was there poetic. For that I was poetic. There for that. I was there. Um, so Scalotto has been linked to the LA Galaxy even before this rumor. Uh, Scalotto looks like he is not going to stay with Boca anymore. Uh, and it seems like, and at least reports have been out there, that there are two offers in Major League Soccer for him. There is a strong hint that he would be the next coach at the Columbus Crew if Greg Berhalter was to go to the U.S. Men's National Team. A lot team. of dominoes need to fall. There, there's a lot of things that have to happen in order for that. But there's also a lot of things. The Galaxy, I think, would be and probably are this other team. Um, the LA Galaxy were one of the un unnamed teams, even though they were named, <laughs> right? It's like, it's all the stuff. It's like, there's two teams. Hold on, I'm doing we, the math here. We know one, uh, you know. He used to play for Columbus and the Galaxy are looking for a coach. I wonder which two teams... <laughs> yeah, I mean, are vying for his attention. Well, the other part of that is that it goes into even more dominoes that perhaps Scalotto could be the coach at Columbus if the LA Galaxy were able to st snag yeah, Greg Burhalter, yes. who is the number one choice, it looks like, for the U.S. men's national team. Uh, the Galaxy also probably have him as their number one choice right now, and it would probably go him. Uh, and then I would rank them in likelihood of. Uh, of Greg Burhalter in terms of actually what the Galaxy want, and then they would probably want Porter, and <sighs> then it's probably Scalotto. But maybe Scalotto's above Porter, and that they're going to try that, and the fallback position is Porter. If you're talking about likelihood right now, and what could actually happen, I'm telling you Porter's the number one in, yeah. in the likelihood scenario, which gets nobody excited, by the way. No, absolutely no one. Uh, uh, Kevin Baxter's Caleb Porter. Cal Caleb. <laughs> I love it whenever. I it's my favorite. It's my favorite. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so those are all the things. Now, I mean, just the possibility of Scalotto coming and bringing Dario Benedetto. By the way, uh, rumors continued to persist that it wasn't just Benedetto. It was also a defensive midfielder or a central He's defender. He's bringing the whole team with him. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's there's salaries to be worked out. But there there's a, the kernel of truth there is is that when 
you know, if a manager comes over and he was well liked by those players, then he's going to be able to convince them and sway them uh, to come to the LA Galaxy. And you think if Benedetto wants to come, okay, those, that that puzzle piece doesn't fit. But right. you know, a defensive midfielder, maybe some de- uh, defensive options, that would be nice if he could sway some of those players, some of those Boca players, because Boca is, uh, you know. They're not a, a Gamba Osaka. You know, they're a real legit club. So to get someone who's a starting caliber from that club would definitely benefit the Galaxy. Breaking news. Five. New England has scored a goal. Oh. It is 4-1. Oh, we're in the game. The comeback is upon us. Teal Bunbury, five goal, <laughs> final 10 minutes. He's, he, gets, he shoots from outside the arc. That's what it is. Again. <laughs> Rock and jock. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, no. So, I mean, those are... <laughs> The absurdity of going any further th- with this than just looking at Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, having to leave in order for this to make sense. Uh, let's see. Greg Burhalter has to pick up the U.S. men's national team job, and then Scalotto has has, ha- has, has, to deny Columbus. has to deny Columbus and come to the L.A. Galaxy. So those are other dominoes. Uh, you have to get rid of a DP. Um, you're paying a ton of money uh, for uh, uh, Dario Benedetto. Um so you look at all of these things that have sort of come around and it, there's, listen, I, and I was talking to Kevin Baxter cause he was like, he was saying there's no way this deal happens. And I said, technically all of these things are possible to happen. Just all of them to happen at once. Eric yeah. seemed like it's a ridiculous thing to yeah. like really go too it, far. It doesn't away. add up. The math doesn't add up just with the DP spots that are full, the years that they're full through the amount of money that it's going to require the position that he plays. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's fire where this smoke is coming from. No. And, and it just, it doesn't make any sense to me. It, it just, it's tough. I, I can see the smoke. I see it. It's there. Uh, uh, Benedetto is how old? 28? Yes, 28. 28 years old. 28. Uh, uh, it's, it, <laughs> I'm, late, I'm late with the stats. No, no problem. That's okay. Uh, 28. Uh, he's there. So, I mean, that's not horrible. He's coming off injuries. Uh, he's a good player. He'd probably do well in the league. Probably score goals. Probably score goals. I mean, there's some things there. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's tough to imagine any scenario right now that that puts the Galaxy deeper on the offensive side without clearing and by the way talking to some people and to some sources and through some secondhand different ways you know basically the galaxy would have to clear so much payroll in order to make that happen that already it's sort of a head scratcher to even start with yeah when you uh, look at the players the talent that they have on the field now it feels like it you just need someone to put it together in the right in the right combination and then, you know add some some you know more solid defending maybe uh, a midfield option but you know, to bring in Benedetto, you, you feel like you'd need to deconstruct a lot more. And, and I, I agree with you. It, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't make sense to get rid of Zlatan to bring in Benedetto and then get rid of a DP. Uh, it, it just, to me, it doesn't make sense. No, it, it doesn't make sense. And it's one of those things that you sit there and, and just try to try to figure out. It's just, I would say pump the brakes. Yeah. And that's, but, it, but what it is, is people get excited. It's Boca Juniors, which is a big club. Benedetto, someone who's going to score goals. Scalotto's, you know, someone who's well liked, who would look to bring an exciting style to the team. So you want this thing to happen. You know, it'd be great if you can add him as an attacking option. Uh, and have Sklota as the coach and say, wow, this is this is really a good thing. But at the same time, is it realistic? That's what you really need to look at. Can I throw some fuel on the fire, though? Absolutely. Now that I've doused the well, flames. And that's and the best just... part is, you know, this is not going to happen. But, 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 but by the way, <laughs> um, the LA Galaxy currently have two scouts. We know this. Uh, Kurt Schmidt is one of them, and Jovan Karofsky is the other one. Jovan Karofsky is currently not in the country, or at least he wasn't earlier this week. Anyone check Argentina? Jovan Karofsky was in Argentina. All right. So. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, no problem. Thanks so for letting just, me go on a, on a three-minute rant and saving that and bit of information for me. I like to I like to put <laughs> things in reality. I, and I also, I was telling Eric before this, he because he came in, comes in and he says, hey, um, but what do you think, uh, you know, what do you think of these Benedetto rumors? And I'm like, I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm jaded. I'm jaded with the Galaxy rumors. I hate every rumor that comes out. I'm like, that's stupid. Who, who, who said that? Right? And even whenever it's somebody who's totally credible, I, that's stupid. Oh, God. You know, it's mostly because I sit there, and how many times did I write about there's, Zlatan Ibrahimovic? There's so many rumors. And if there's going to be a rumor, it's always the LA Galaxy. There's there's some German guy that I wrote, like, three articles on that never made it to the LA Galaxy. I mean, there's, like, players I write stuff about and research and feel good <laughs> about. And I think we're close. I mean, um... 
you know, there was a whole bunch of things that you, that you could go down the roads of, oh, they were close on guys. And, and and that's where, again, adding more fuel to the fire is because he was a target years ago, you know there's a relationship there possibly with an agent. These talks have happened before, so it's just a matter of rekindling that flame and seeing if, if they can get it going again. So, again, that just adds more because it's familiar. It's not like this is a brand new random person. This is someone who the Galaxy have been linked to before. So, of course, okay, he's back. Let's get excited about it. I, I see that. I do believe that the Galaxy were interested in Dario Benedetto before. Yes. I believe that there is interest. Um, I believe that there's probably been talks. Uh, I believe that, you know, there's a possibility that we learn more about these deals and we learn who's going to be leaving and who's coming. I'll tell you right now, it's too early to be talking about this. It's not within the, uh, like, it's not within the transfer window. December is when you yeah, want to look at this. It's too early. Um, so, you know, a 28 year old striker is great. And I think that he would do really well. I think you have to worry about injuries. He's coming off an ACL injury. Uh, I think he's coming off three or four different injuries over yeah. the course of the last, maybe two years. I think, uh, yeah, two years ago, he was coming off an injury and then he re-injured it. Yes. Yeah. So you, so you have all of these issues that you look at for, you know, a 28 year old and what you want to invest money in. And certainly you look at guys like Roman Alessandrini, who was, who have also dealt with injuries. And you saw that rear its head this year, uh, with Alessandrini not playing on the field as much. I mean, I think the galaxy would be in a better position had Allison Drini been available for more games. I think the Galaxy would have been in a better position had Jonathan Dos Santos been available for more games. Uh, quite honestly, they'd be in a better pos- position if Giovanni Dos he Santos, had a pulse. if he if he was still <laughs> actively on the team, uh, which he is. That was just a, I don't want people to be like, oh, he's not on the team, Josh. I'll get yeah. I'll get questions. I don't need questions. Um, so all that stuff, you know, I just think that right now in this current situation with the current front office not having a coach. <sighs> This, I, even going further, <laughs> Scalotto, if you're going to hire Scalotto, who's going to be your general manager? Because you can't leave Scalotto. You're not giving him the Burr Halter deal. You can't give him the Burr Halter deal. Because um, he hasn't proven himself to know what he's doing in Major League Soccer. Now, granted, he comes into Major League Soccer with way more knowledge than any other international probably would come in having played Having in the been league. A player, yes. But he was not a front office person. Uh, in the league, and so that, that but means but something. to his credit, having played in the league, and it's not that far removed, he's going to know the type of player who's going to succeed in the league. So um, it's not too far of a leap. I would agree. You you would want someone else in that GM position, but it wouldn't be crazy to have him be a part of that decision making process. Yeah, but that's backwards. Yeah, it is. You know backwards. what's backwards. I know. I know. You I'm, know how you, you know how you general told, manager. You work. told you walk, talked me off of it, then you talked me back in, and now you're getting ba- mad at me for talking it in. I'm a Make tease. up your mind. I'm a Make tease up your mind. Is what I am. I'm a tease, and that's fine, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, so, yeah, so that's sort of where we stand on on that. I would say that uh, people asking if Dominic Kinnear still has a chance to be coach of the Galaxy, I will I will come slightly off my position of no way in double H-E hockey sticks, uh, but I will go as far as to say that if the Galaxy continue to win, it's hard, I think, harder to move him. I think an MLS Cup is the only way Dom, Dom keeps his job. I don't think he keeps it if he got uh, Even MLS if he Cup. does that, it's it's... I'm, I'm not saying he, that's an automatic. I'm saying that's the only way that you know the it. door opens. Uh, Kevin Baxter did talk to uh, Chris Klein and said that, <laughs> of course, he would he would consider Dominic Kinnear. But well, he's I not going to say that. Yeah, he's not going to be <laughs> as like, as we no. push through the playoffs. There's no way I like this guy. He's this no, guy out of here. That's not how it works. Uh, LA Galaxy getting ready to face, and I will say this: a must-win game Yay. for the LA Galaxy. I love there these. we go. Uh, wait, it really is a must-win game. If well. Let's not stop. Let's stop saying if it is a must win. It's a must win game. This is our first one yeah, though. This, this is, is the real one. Actual must for win. For real, game. for real, double cross. You know, there's, there's, there's <laughs> cross there's, our heart, hope to die. This is definitely a, a must win game. There's no quotation marks over <laughs> no. it. I, this is so much fun. All right, this is a must win game for the LA Galaxy heading into Minnesota. Uh, the record for Minnesota: 11, 18, and three, 36 points. The LA Galaxy: 12, 11, and 9, 45 points. Uh, however. The home record for Minnesota is better than the home record for the LA Galaxy. Uh, Minnesota at home at the world's worst turf and the world's worst soccer stadium. It's not a soccer stadium. It's a football stadium. Uh, is 10-5-1, and 31 points. Uh, the Galaxy are 8-4-4 four, and four at home for 28 points. Away on the road. <sighs> See, if this game was in, at LA. It's no break. It's, a, it's, a no it's break. easy. Uh, because Minnesota is 1-13-2 on the season. Although, <laughs> two... <laughs> Although, when you think about those draws, where did they draw? Yeah, I know. StubHub Center. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. yeah. Uh, four, seven, and five uh, for the LA Galaxy on the road this year. 17 points. Actually, a pretty decent clip for the Galaxy. Not bad. Getting results in uh, nine games out of their 16 played so far. It's not bad. I'll take that. Yeah, that's 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 not horrible uh, whenever you look at it. Last five games, these two teams are exactly the same. Two, two, and one, seven points. It's in uh, reverse, yeah. Yeah, ex- yeah exactly. Uh, uh, all-time 0-1-1 one one 
for Minnesota, 1-0-1 all time. They played each other twice. This is this is basically <laughs> what we're getting at. They played each other twice. Um, so that's how it goes. Uh, let's see. The streaks right now going on. Uh, there is a two-game losing streak by Minnesota. Minnesota just lost to Colorado uh, this last weekend. Uh, and, of course, the LA Galaxy are in a three-game unbeaten streak, 2-0-1 in that time. Uh, I will tell you this. I watched some of that Colorado game. Uh, and I went back and watched some extended highlights that way I could watch Minnesota and uh, and, and it was wacky from what I saw. It, so it just wacky. seemed like a wacky game. It was so it was such a game. It was a game that Minnesota really did dominate for large stretches. Um, but it was also a game that Colorado looked like, and somebody said looked like Arsenal passing, like you know, <laughs> passing in between and just like holding possession. And Colorado was really good. And Colorado got two goals. Uh, the big deal is that Minnesota got two goals as well, but both of them call, were called back for VAR. It's usually and, a problem. And they went irate, by the way, in all of this. They just lost it at every yeah. possible outcome in terms of every time VAR pulled back a goal. They were right yeah. both times. <laughs> uh, and Minnesota actually, I think, is still possibly looking at sus- some suspensions. Yeah. Well, when I look, here's how you know it was a wacky game. I went back and looked at, you know, kind of the box, you know, stats from that. And there were red cards given in 90 plus 14. So 14 minutes of injury time tells you there were some video reviews. There were some, you know, uh, some scuffles. So there was, there was a that's, brawl. That's basically. a wackiness. There yeah. was a brawl at, at the end of the game. So there's um, discipline to be so, handed out. Yeah, and we're still sort of waiting for that. Uh, right now, suspended for this game is Harrison Heath, midfielder Harrison Heath. Uh, suspended after the next game because of cautions is Miguel, uh, Miguel Ibarra. Um, so we'll see if any of that happens. They don't have anybody out to international duty, according to MLS, which you can't trust at all. But it's basically all I have to go off of in terms of uh, where they're at and, and, and let's be how honest. they're doing. Yeah. Who who from Minnesota is being called for international duty? I, I know that's rude. I know that's Dar- being Darwin called. Quintero. I mean, yeah, wouldn't okay, you, maybe, maybe. Come yeah. on. Give me a little bit. Yeah, but still. Uh, their best player, uh, Darwin Quintero, 11 goals, 13 assists on the season. Uh, Quintero is by far their their best guy going up against Zlatan Ibrahimovic for the LA Galaxy. He's, he's their Zlatan. When you look at their stat sheet, Zlatan leads uh, the LA Galaxy in all offensive categories. Darwin Quintero leads Minnesota United. Did and... not get any goals against uh, against Colorado. In fact, was not really the dangerous one in that game. Um, well, and, there were other guys who were more dangerous. And I think if you're going to be successful against Minnesota, you isolate him and, and put him away. And I I look back to the game uh, on August 11th when the Galaxy played Minnesota. They they, they did well uh, against Quintero. They didn't let him um, really make a lot of noise, but there were other players who they had to account for, and they didn't, and that's where the Galaxy lapsed last time they played. Uh, Minnesota has just two shutouts, I believe, on the season. Bobby Shuttleworth, uh, their goalkeeper, has two shutouts, 103 saves, 155 shots face. Just like to point out, a lot out, of peppering. Just like to point out that the Galaxy are way worse on that. Uh, David Bingham has eight shutouts though, 119 saves on 180 shots faced. Tells you something. Poor David Bingham. Poor David Bingham. Yeah, when when the game, what that tells me is when the games go bad, they go really bad for the Los Angeles Galaxy this season. They do, uh, allowing just one goal in their last three games of the Galaxy, uh, which. Uh, takes them out of record-breaking territory. Orlando yeah. is the one who is... Uh, Orlando's setting the world on fire. They, they're, they're out there New Englanding. They're racing. <laughs> they're racing the San Jose Earthquakes to the bottom right now. <laughs> they I mean, really like that wooden spoon. The, the wooden spoon is going to go one of those two teams, and San Jose... Actually, if you're San Jose right now, you have to be kicking yourself saying, how are we worse than Orlando? <laughs> because Orlando got smoked and shut out by New England. Uh, and New England can't even play at RSL. So, I mean, so all of these things. It, yeah, it's just, it's been crazy. But anyway, uh, I think Galaxy fans are still hoping that wooden spoon goes to San Jose. And it, yeah, I think it, it can be decided this weekend. Um, so just keep your eye on that. That could be. Uh, That's we, what you're watching for. We could know. And the I, wooden spoon race. And I would like to point out that before the game on Sunday, the, the last home game uh, against Houston, I will be marching the wooden spoon to the supporters and getting <laughs> it out of this office. Um, it's ugly, um, and it takes up shelf space, and I yeah. need to get rid of it. I'm gonna say I, w- I won't be sad to see it go. No, nobody, w- nobody won't miss it. I kind of, it, it's kind of like a Horcrux, like in, in <laughs> Harry Potter. I, you get around it, and you just get in a bad mood, and you're just, you're. Yeah, that's fair. Was Which that, is a good sign. Maybe that's a good thing for the for the galaxy. Does that keep me cool with the millennials now that I made a Harry Potter reference? Or no, are we cool? Harry Potter. I don't know if that is that a millennial thing. I, I guess they were all kids when. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, sure. I read the books in like college, so I would imagine. <laughs> I imagine that's when it happened. Uh, anyway, so uh, so yeah, that's where we uh, where we stand on that game again. October twenty first, uh, a two p.m. Pacific time, four p.m. Central time. Uh, game is on ESPN. 
ESPN Deportes. That's where you can find the game. Uh, this is a game right now that you're going to see a lineup that is largely on pain to change. You're getting Rolf Felcher back. Uh, so Rolf Felcher is going to be back in that right back position. You're not going to have uh, Shannon Williams there. Uh, you're going to get a center back pairing of Dave Romney and Daniel Starez. This is the most predictable lineup yeah. the Galaxy will you're ever have. You're seeing the lineup you saw against Vancouver. That's the right. The last time that you, this lineup was available, that's who you're going to get. That's who, who you're getting. He's Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Ola Kamara. Uh, by the way, everybody needs to pay attention to how much work Ola Kamara does off the ball and how unbelievably good he's been this year. And he is my second in line for MVP because yeah. he just, the way he works and orbits around Zlatan Ibrahimovic and does, pulls the work for Zlatan, amazing. And, and and you saw it against the game, the game against Sporting Kansas City is Zlatan drops into that midfield role as well. So that's the great thing uh, you could say. Yes, Zlatan is displacing Ola by forcing him to play in the midfield, but the way Zlatan plays, he likes to control the game as well. So when he drops back and starts playing in the middle, that allows Ola to move forward. So they're really interchangeable. Uh, you know, Ola not, ne- not as great on the ball and, and distributing. And let's be honest, Zlatan, you know, He's not exactly giving perfect service on every ball as well. He's he makes his mistakes, but he's obviously much better at distributing and making things happen, drawing the defenders to him. So so I think yeah, I think this is a good a good thing that we're seeing with Zlatan and Ola. I, I think that this is going to be uh, ridiculously interesting. This 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 game is the most interesting game of the year just because <laughs> it's played on this just ridiculously bad turf. Uh, Yella Von Dom complained about it. The same game that uh, ba- Baggio Osic broke his leg yeah. on it. Yella Von Dom got injured as well and said that it was the worst turf he's ever. played played on ever. Um, this is worse than anything Seattle has. This is worse than New England has. This is this, this is by far, this is like old AstroTurf. Good, good riddance. Yeah, this is like a, a pool table felt, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a pool table felt might be softer. I was going to um, say that at least there's the bumpers there to give a little cushion. Yeah, it's just, it just really bad. Um, I didn't check the weather, but I heard it's going to be a little chilly. Uh, it's Minnesota. A little cold. It's Minnesota. It's October. Yeah, It'll it be should cold. be. It should be. Possibly. Bring your gloves. Possibly ice, you know, I'm sure. What's, what else happens in Minnesota? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's a lake around. I'm sure there's a lake somewhere around, right? There's a thousand of them. 10,000. Actually, yeah, there's, there's more 10,000. 10, there's more than 10,000 lakes. Even though it's the land of 10,000 lakes, <laughs> there are more than 10,000 lakes. Corner of the galaxy. History. Come for the soccer, stay, stay for, for the, the geography. There you go. That's what it is. I could tell you. want me to explain what a no. peninsula is? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always like that in geography. I always like knowing what things were like peninsulas, land and masses, land masses, a and, plateau, and a mesa. island, a mesa. <laughs> Bring out all the and archi- topography terms. And archipelago. <laughs> that was good. That's, that's good times. I think he plays archipelago. The galaxy have rumors to sign him next season. A string of islands dividing two <laughs> bodies of water. Thank you very much. Moving um, on. There we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> all right. So anyway, so that's sort of where we sit with Minnesota and this game. Um, again, expecting fifty thousand in attendance. Um, they, there's still some stuff to sort of be decided. I'm sure they know, and I haven't seen the results. I believe there's still some discipline coming down in terms of to Minnesota. It might just be to bench players. It might not be to any starters, so it may not totally affect. And the I outcome. believe one of the one of the red cards that came was was off the bench. It wasn't a player yeah, who was it, on the game. Yeah, yeah, but it could have been a player that was subbed out already, and yeah. I don't know that. And it was just it was a whole ugly thing. A, a Colorado, uh, uh, Colorado scored a goal. Um, and then basically celebrated about six you know, six feet to the left of the Minnesota bench, and the Minnesota bench didn't like that. It was it was. Let them have fun. It's I'm, Colorado. They don't win a lot of games. You're losing. It's over. <laughs> like it's one of those things. So that's how it is. Um, so yeah. So that's where it is. Uh, Alan Kelly is your referee, uh, which I think is a good call. I actually like Alan Kelly. So. I was gonna say the fact that you don't I don't have an opinion is? on Alan Kelly. I'll take that as a win. Yeah, that's absolutely. Yeah, if, you, if you're a referee, I think the best thing a referee can do is have you have no clue who he is. So yeah. no reputation, that means you're doing your job well. Yeah, you're absolutely. You're unnoticeable. No, it is. Um, so, so again, that's sort of where the Galaxy stand. We're in a must-win game situation here. Uh, this is the time where if the Galaxy lose any points here against Minnesota, the season is over for the Galaxy. Um, so that's... Uh, that's that's where we're at. You want to check 538? I have their percentages. Do you? You want to see where they're at? Yeah, yeah, where are they at right now? Minnesota, 39% chance to win the game. Uh-huh. A draw, 22%. Uh-huh. LA Galaxy, also 39%. Oh, come on. So they're it's calling dr- it right down the it's middle. R- it's a draw. It's a, it's it's a, a coin draw. flip. It's a, it's coin, a coin flip. flip. Um, that's interesting. Do you does, uh, Did 538 update their playoff? I haven't checked the... I was, I was going to say, yeah, I have it bookmarked. This is from my research. Oh, that you, were re- you, were, you were actually <laughs> reading today? Well, that hey, first time for everything, right? Yeah, um, good times. But um, I, I think going back to this game um, with Minnesota, especially with the results against Salt Lake today... They have to win this game. It's a must-win game. And if you can't beat Minnesota, 
then you don't deserve to go to the playoffs. So this really, I know we talk about must-win games. We, we know they need the points here. But in all actuality, if you can't win, the talent that the LA Galaxy has, I don't care if they're playing on pool table felt, uh, a pumpkin patch inflatable, it really doesn't matter. The LA Galaxy has better players, and they should be able to beat this team. So they should win big against Minnesota. Uh, to close out the show, I will tell you that Minnesota, or Minnesota, uh, Real Salt Lake currently leading 4-1 to one, uh, in the 90-plus-1 minute. So well, there's still a chance. There's still a chance. <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't hold out your hope. Uh, we're clearly going to RSL on this one, and that's an easy one to sort of uh, sort of say. So, um, listen, the Galaxy now backs up against the wall. This is it. Uh, the final sort of uh, push here for the last two games. If the Galaxy get the win in Minnesota, um, then it comes down to uh, to watching what that result then for RSL talk. Portland is. Then we could talk next week, and we could actually tell you what the Galaxy need to do in order to make the playoffs. Or... It won't matter at all next I was going to say, who would have thunk it? You know, 34 games, and you need 33 to figure out what needs to be done. It really is. Spectacular. It's down to that, and we'll, uh, we'll point out that I think you and I were uh, were podcasting, or maybe I was podcasting with Kevin whenever we realized that the Galaxy had been eliminated like a month ago uh, last year from, oh, from yeah. the playoffs, right? <laughs> yeah, it was like... it was Just like, the fact that we're in the conversation. I think it's it, nice to be I here. think it was like September 27th or September yeah. 28th when the Galaxy were eliminated from the playoffs last but, year. But let's be real. We knew... <laughs> We knew early on last year that the Galaxy were eliminated. Yeah, it sort of felt that <laughs> way. Um, that's what it is. All right. Uh, I think I think that's it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to get to uh, before this game. Uh, it seems pretty likely think, that... Yeah, RSL wins. This is a must win. We're playing on turf. Zlatan's most likely going to go going to see similar formations i think we've checked all the boxes josh okay good then we can then we can get on out of here i was trying to see if i could get a final on the on the rsl game and just be like <laughs> it's final but i'm just gonna tell you it's a final rsl a, wins uh in credits RSL after win, the credits after scene the credits. Uh, rsl did indeed <laughs> new england scored seven goals in the last three <laughs> seconds and uh new england no uh rsl wins so now must win for the la galaxy at minnesota on october 21st all right uh are you good I'm good. Are you sure? I'm positive. Okay. I just wanted to, I, I wanted to check with you. I feel Thank like you. sometimes maybe I'm too bossy. I appreciate that. It's Thank probably... You. After telling me that you're a four out of 10 and I'm a zero, I'll take the compliment now. All right. Tell people where they can find you. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at GIS Hammer. You can also hear me at Guys in Shorts LA. You could uh, listen to us, our podcast. We took a little break. We had our, our host, Jeff Wilson, get married this weekend. So congratulations, uh, congratulations to Jeff. I also Yay, want to give a, a shout out to at Kings Realm Pod. You can find them on Twitter. Hockey season is back. They were uh, sending me updates. Laton dropped the puck tonight at LA Kings Night. So, you know, if you like the Kings, they're doing a great job over there. They've had some great guests. They had Alex Faust, who's the voice of the LA Kings on Fox Sports. So Ooh. fun show. So check them out at Kings Realm Pod. All right. And if you're looking for me on Twitter, uh, it's at Jay Gessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N. And, of course, head on over to at Galaxy Podcast. That's where you can find us. Or head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. All of our articles, all of our game previews, our recaps, and, of course, our podcasts. Also, doing a special right now if you want to buy an, R- uh, an LA Galaxy. Ugh. If you want to buy a Corner <laughs> of the Galaxy scarf, uh, COG20 at checkout gets you $5 off that scarf. Normally $25. We'll sell, sell it to you for just $20. Type in COG20 at checkout and then pay for shipping and away it goes to you and it happens quickly. So head on over to do that all the way through the end of October. All right. For Mr. Eric the Portuguese Hammer, I'm Josh Kessman telling you the RSL game is a final 4-1. to one. There we go. We hope everybody has a great one. We, of course, will be back on Monday with Mr. Kevin Baxter to recap this weekend's match find out what the LA Galaxy need to do or not need to do in order to make the playoffs. Uh, I think that about does it. Everyone have a great, great day, and we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast, and be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.